Hey guys, welcome to the video report of the third round of the European Youth Chess Championships in Mamaya. So round three, the tournament is getting underway. Um, we have a few, well we have one player on three out of three, which is Ilkut Boer. He's doing pretty good so far in the under 14. Um, he is only pared down so far, but still you got to win those games as well. So he's going pretty strong. Um, also Tiro Bekedam, the under 16, is going pretty good. He has two points out of three games. And only played against like 2300 average and his rating is around 2000 so um he's, he's doing extremely well um only one player only maritz is still on zero point out of three in the girls under 14 and unfortunately she even has a buy this round so that's um, a bit disappointing but she takes it pretty well so um, we're gonna wish her good luck for the rest of the tournament and of course the others as well um so yeah, so far the score, but also a few draws here and there, so um, as you can see the matches are getting closer and closer. So the tournament is really going to begin at this point. Um, so today with me I got the oldest one in the delegation this year, which is Max Warmedam. Hey Max. Hey. And um, so your tournament started off pretty rough, right? Well, I played well. I got an advantage in both games, but I when at the point I could score the points, I missed something in my calculations and I had to settle with a draw. Right. But you won yesterday? Yeah. First win, so you got two out of three as well? Yeah. Um, well, first win, you got to show that one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so it was quite an interesting game, so we're going to skip the beginning um, of the game and we're just going to enter the game right where you... Um, you just played queen e4, right? Yeah, queen to e4. And you offer the exchange of queens. Um, tell me what happened after this point. Um, yeah, so he exchanged queens. This was probably a bit strange because he is pawned down. But he thought that he would probably get the pawn back because it's uh, very weak on d6. Mm -hmm. So he exchanged the queens and then uh, played some normal moves. Here he is threatening to uh, trap my knight with f5. So I had to stop that with uh, g4, and not, if he plays f5 now, I can take, and the uh, knight on d5 is uh, weak. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can recapture on d5, so you just exchange, yeah? Yeah, and this should be winning. One is uh, unprotected. Okay, cool. So, um, he exchanged the knights mm -hmm. to get a rook end game, but uh, yeah, I didn't mind that, because I was still a pass pawn up. And then... So it's always a question, right? Is this pawn weak or strong? That's the entire question. Yeah, but uh, I thought it is well protected, and even if he takes, I can always get a uh, pawn endgame. It shouldn't be bad at all for me. And yeah, that's a bit what happened as well, right? You tried to go with the pawn endgame in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see what happened. Because uh, at first I want to get my pawn to c4, get two protected pass pawns. And then just push, but um, it was not so easy because here he could have exchanged some pawns with a better try than what he played. If he had taken on c4, I have to take with the pawn because otherwise d6 will be hanging. And then e5. And now I have to choose between my d6 and c4 pawn. Right, right. It's probably better for him to exchange a few pawns to simplify the position a little bit. I yes, think. it's always in end games. It's very well to exchange some pawns if you're worse. Yeah. And uh, I had in mind to play rook d5 here actually, but um, probably rook e4 would have been more accurate because I calculated rook d5 takes a pawn. I take a pawn, and I thought here because he is a pawn down, he has to, to take the g4 pawn. Mm -hmm. And after that, I had seen that, uh, yeah, here I'm threatening rook e8, so he has to play king f8, play rook e1, and he can't take the pawn because I have mate. So... No, rook e8 is threatening at the moment with checkmate? Yeah, no. that as well. And uh, so he has to get his rook back to the 8th rank. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, here after rook e7, because I'm completely dominating, this should be very easily winning. Can't do anything. No. His rook can't leave the back rank, his king can't move. No. He can just push a few pawns, but that's it. Yeah. 
You can bring your king, right? Because yeah, that's I mean, your only plan, basically. I might as well take the a6 pawn, but I could have also gone to c3 and just put my king on c6 and then uh, with the same point. Yeah, right, okay. But um, if he plays king f8 first instead of taking the pawn, uh, then I, he's still a pawn down. But because my d7 pawn or d6 pawn is still weak, he might get it back and go to an equal or yeah equal pawn end game pretty drawish uh, stuff yeah if he gets a deep pawn yeah, yeah because i protect my g4 pawn and then i can still protect it but um yeah skin gets into the game and it's not so clear how it's easy, right it's always about activity yeah. in end games yeah it's important instead of grabbing the g4 pawn you should get your king active and uh, there's always a better choice yeah the g4 pawn uh, doesn't really matter but uh, what would have been better instead of this was uh, rook e4. And then he gets my d6 pawn, probably. But because my c5 pawn is so strong, it, or my c pawn is so strong, it doesn't really matter that he can get some pawns. It's different, the pawn is on c4, and your king is quite close, yeah? So you yeah. can easily support the pawn with your king. And this king is also cut off because. My rook is on right, e5. Yeah, that seems, looks much better. Yeah. So this would be easily winning. And you can also protect this uh, e5 pawn so that my d6 pawn is weak. But here you can play f4 and see. I can play d7 in the meantime. Threatening rook e8. So he has to play king f7. I take the pawn back. Take it back. Okay, yeah. I win a tempo and um, yeah, he still gets a d pawn. But because I'm very active with my king, uh, the pawn endgame should be winning. Because uh, my pass pawn is further away from the rest of the pawns. Makes sense. It's all about activity. Yeah. Every time, activity, activity, activity. Nice. Okay, but that's not what he played, right? He went for a more passive approach, I think? Uh, yeah. So I tried to get his king to the ah, okay. pass pawn, but mm -hmm. this allowed me to be active myself as well. Okay. So I played king c3. Mm -hmm. King e8, yeah. logical. And now I could have played king b4, but if he now takes on c4, I have to take back with the pawn. And rook b8, or no, king d7 first. Uh, seemed annoying to me. Because here I can't play c5 because he has this check. I have to play king c4 and rook b5, yeah. and here I probably lost as well. Nice to see how he put his king in front of the pawn now. So he can just do with the rooks whatever he wants now. Yeah, he's very well blocking all of the pawns and attacking them at the same time. Right. Yeah, so you didn't go with this one. You went for the, the pawn um, in game, right? You could get some forced pawn in game. Yeah, here. I pushed my pawn to d7 first so okay. that he couldn't block it on d6. Mm -hmm. And then I went for king b4, but now. Um, because my pawn is also on d7, I can also take back with a rook on c4 if he takes. Okay. Yeah, and here I actually missed a trick. Because um, he played... I thought he should take on c4 and then take on d7, but he could take on d7 immediately. Uh, yeah, clever move. And here I also could have gone for rook takes c6, rook takes d1, rook takes a6, and because of my two pass pawns, I should win, but because he also gets some activity and take the f2 pawn, gets his own pass pawns, um, I thought this should be more complicated and I should uh, show more technique than I did in the game. Okay, fair enough. Because um, I also have the option to exchange to a pawn in game, and because my pawns on the my pass pawn or potentially pass pawn is further away from the rest of the pawns. I thought this should be winning. But yeah, because, because your potentially pass pawn is like the A or the B pawn, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Um... And uh, I could give that pawn up so I could go to the king side and take some pawns over there. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't so as easy as I thought. Because here I was in sort of time trouble, but I had to choose between um, leaving my king in the middle of the board on c4. Or going for the A pawn and uh, creating some play over there. And um, 
So I was basically choosing between king a5 and king c4, but king c4 would have been a bad move. Because now we can play g5. And after g5, I don't have an entry with my king. He can play f6 and wait with this king. Right, yeah, so let's say for example you want to try and run in. You go yeah. king d4, he goes f6, and now you can't just... He has all these squares covered, right? Yeah. There's no way to access... You can't just get it. You can't get close to the pawns. No. And the black king is gonna control the c5 square as well. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can defend, right? Yeah. Okay. But um, plan would have actually worked if I stopped g5 first. So I could have gone for h4. Uh -huh. And now, um, yeah, I can go to d4 with my king. Um, just push the pawns. Just has to wait. Huh? Yeah, can't do now much. he has to wait. And um, I can push my pawns all the way up. And now I can uh, push my other pawn so that my king has some space to get in. Because I want to go to e7 and then uh, pick up some pawns. Right. So I should push b5, takes, takes. He has to go back with his king eventually. Yeah, so now you're, like, you're gonna push the king back. For example, like this. Yeah, and then push a pawn push again. It. And then you can decide to go, probably like, maybe to the 6 immediately yeah. as well. Yeah, you can maybe win a tempo, but now you're getting this. Yeah, and this you pick up all the pawns, this win, win the game. Very easily. That's nice to see how you have to be careful on how to stop black from blockading your king to get in. Yeah. It's quite nice to see that h4 is such an important move in that position. But um, in the time trouble, I decided to go for another plan. To go for the queen side, move king h5, and um, yeah, I thought I was winning on two tempos, but it eventually came down on one tempo, which was quite close. Because um, yeah, he has protect this a6 pawn, mm -hmm. then I push, and then I push b4. Mm -hmm. But what if what would have been easier again was h4? Same reasons, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, this is slightly different. Because, um, yeah, he wants to trade off all the pawns on the queen side, or the, no, sorry, the king side. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm only left with uh, my queen side, which shouldn't win. So right. he should try a, some move, but after f5, I can just take and play h5. And it's basically only the f pawns left, and he can't trade anything. I just paralyzed the g and the h pawn, which yeah. is your own h pawn. So yeah. I'm not even a pawn down now on the king side. You yeah. can also try to play f5 with g6. Now I play g5 with the same idea, and he's paralyzed again. So this would have been easier, but uh, before it's also winning. Not at all, right? Um, <laughs> well, I saw it actually, but I miscalculated on the tempo, which didn't matter in the end. Okay. Let's see how it works out when all the moves are being played. So he tries to trade off some pawns. Mm -hmm. With f5, I took. But he needs to try to create a pass pawn or something on the king side, yeah? Well, he can't just sit back now anymore. Um, yeah, so the only thing to do is play f5. Mm -hmm. I need to take. And his plan is to play g3 at some point. So he wants to go g5, g4, f4, h5, h4. This here. That one there, right? So you can try straight to break break through with g three. Yeah, and then uh, he has to force my king to come back. I have to exchange all of the pawns, and then he can just pick up my queen side, which should be a draw. Right. But this plan seems pretty slow. Uh, yeah, but it all comes down on the tempo. Right. Which, um. Show us what happens. Yeah, I play b five because mm -hmm. I need to get back with my king. G five. Uh, I took. Has to go to a7, and now I need to go back with my king. I'm gonna run. Yeah, and here he just followed, or he could have just followed that plan of trying to exchange the pawns, but it wouldn't have worked because um, here he isn't in time to play h4, and he can't play g3. Because if I would have uh, been a tempo down, then he could have played h4, mm -hmm. king e4, g3. And king f3 seem, still seems like a good try. But the problem is that he doesn't need to do anything on the king side. And he can just take the pawn 
and I still uh, uh, can't keep a pawn on the board. You can never grab a pawn on f4 or h4 because you gotta stop g2 all the time. Yeah, and um, yeah, they can't on exchange all the pawns. Yeah. It's not working yet. Also. Right. So it came down on the tempo. Pretty close. And uh, so he took, I went to the king side. And here he also went to the king side to make his own pass pawn, but it was way too slow. And yeah, this was easily winning. Cool. Pretty complicated end game. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few nuances and, and details there. Um, I must say it's, it's pretty interesting. Quite complicated though, but pretty interesting. So um, and we're going to put the analysis um, below the video. So you can just uh, take your time and um, and check out all the variations on your own because um, I can imagine it might have gone a bit too quick, um, but it's for sure interesting. So um, do have a look at that. And um, so what's up with today? Who are you playing? Um, I'm playing someone from Latvia. Mm -hmm. um, yes, century thirty. So I'm uh, rated down, but still a tough opponent. Yeah, and you're playing black. Black, black yeah. Black. Okay. So. Um, well, good luck to you, um, and thank you as well for joining us here. And um, I, I hope we're going to be back tomorrow again with a new video report. And uh, I want to thank you all for watching. And um, please leave a comment or a follow or anything if you um, if you enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, well, thank you. Good luck, and uh, thank you guys. See you later.